Welcome to the Gathering Church program. Sharing God's love and compassion with everyone in every nation around the world. And helping you find answers you need every day. From Moravian Falls, North Carolina, here's Dr. David White. We want to welcome you to today's program. We're honored that you would uh, join us wherever you're watching from. We encourage you to contact someone, text them, call them, let them know that also to watch today's program. We believe God's going to do something very special, not only in your life, but those that are in in any way a part uh, of this hour, of our joining together. Right now, all over the earth, God is casting a great net And it's the harvest, it's the days of the harvest. Many are coming to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And we believe this is your hour, this is your day of salvation. At the end, we're going to give you an opportunity to receive him. We're also going to pray that God would touch you, uh, sicknesses, diseases, uh, bondages, nothing is impossible with our God. And so as we do, we're going to open in prayer, and then we're going to have Richard and Kimberly Wilson lead us in worship. And after their worship, I'm going to come back and get into the Word of God today. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for the opportunity to share your Word and to hear your Word. Lord, let this be the day of salvation, deliverance, healing, restoration. Father, we thank you. You're moving throughout the nations of the earth. And it's not by accident that anyone is a part of this program today. We give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen.
There's an old saying that says, time waits for no one. And we began a message last week on the subject of time and also regarding the end of time, or what the Bible says about the end. And I'm going to review a few things, but uh, many people around the world are asking that question. Are we approaching the end? How close are are we to the end of the age, the end of time? And uh, I believe we're a lot closer than we think. I shared last week with you that uh, my my granddaughter is really so precious to me. And uh, those of you that have grandchildren, you understand. And I, I remember a story of a grandfather that was trying to teach his granddaughter how to count and how to tell time at the same time. And he had a clock that chimed on every hour, and it chimed the number of times, you know, corresponding to the hour. If it was 3 o'clock, it chimed three times or four or whatever. And uh, so it was almost noon. And uh, so the grandfather said, come on, I want you to count the chimes and tell me what time it is. And uh, so she counts, and uh, after it's over, he said, well, what time is it? She said, Grandpa, it's 13 o'clock. Now, she was a little ahead in her counting and in her time, but really, that she was probably more wise than we know. It's a lot later than we think, and so the subject of time is so important and that we understand especially the end. Now, Jeremiah, we read the Scripture last week. He asked a question to the people. He said, what will you do in the end? And so that's the, the topic. First of all, we looked last week at the end of the story and how many times our own, you know, story, we hear love stories or, you know, we read and uh, people live, it says, then they lived happily ever after. But we know that is often more of a fairy tale because life has its challenges. There are ups and downs, there are mountains and valleys, and there are things that we, we, we can't avoid, difficulties. And, uh, but we know that, you know, there's going to come an end of our own story. Our own life is a story. When you were born and the day you die, that's the end of your story. You began, you're going to end, and right now you're living out the middle part, that which is going to affect all of eternity. And so there's going to come the end of our own story one day. And wherever you've been, whatever has happened for you, you can live happily ever after, maybe not always in this life, but for all of eternity. There's a promise that will, life will live on forever for those who are in Christ Jesus. And then there's the end of the game, and we talked about that. We gave a number of illustrations of how there's going to be, you know, like a, a game clock. It's counting down, and one day that the end of our game will be over. 
and I gave some personal illustrations of how I played sports. And, uh, but every game I've ever been a part of, it never lasts forever. There came a time, the final buzzer, the final whistle, the final horn. And one day our own game will be over. Then there's the end of every relationship. We spoke about marriage, how that God created marriage for purpose. He gave our wives to us, our our husbands, as a, a, a covenant relationship that is to last forever till death us do part. And there are many purposes for marriage. And we went over all of that. And um, we won't repeat that. But marriage is to be a lot of fun. It's to be your life partner. And God is intended to, for us to have our best friend. Remember, God saw Adam in the garden, and he said it was not good that man should be alone. So I'm going to make a helper comparable. Uh, and so he made woman, drew the woman out of man. Went, man went into a deep sleep. Out of the rib of Adam became woman. Best friend, relationship, prayer partner. Uh, parents, and so, and on and on. But no relationship is going to last forever. The only one is if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That'll never end. It'll go on forever and ever and ever. And then where we ended up last week was the end of the matter. And there's a scripture over in the book of Ecclesiastes that says, do not say while the former days are better than these. In other words, Don't live your life looking back as if yesterday was the best there was and nothing will compare with what it was like. No, let me tell you, for a believer, the best is yet to come. The Bible says, I know the plans I have for you, plans of good and not for evil, to give you a future, a glorious future and a hope. There's always more to the story for those who are in Christ Jesus. I've heard it said The best time that you'll ever live is right now. The best place you'll ever live is wherever you're living right now. And the best people you'll ever be with are those that God has ordained that you are with, that surround you right now, this very day. So the end, the Bible says the end of a thing is better than its beginning. I heard a story. In fact, it's in the news right now where I live. It was on the major television networks about a, one of the original Tuskegee Airmen. They found the remains of his body. He died 79 years ago. He was part of an uh, African-American pilot unit. They would accompany fighter, uh, you know, jets, uh, you know, fighter planes, actually, in that day that would bomb, you know, their targets. And he was a part of the, the accompanying escort uh, group. But a great cloud came over, and uh, so they had to turn around, and there were 57 planes, little planes. 47 of them made it back, but 10 of them didn't, and according to eyewitnesses, this one pilot went up, tried to get out of the clouds, but he went into a spin, and they saw him literally go into a, a spin, and he never came out of it. He died. And now, all these years later, they can identify through DNA testing and other ways, they've identified the remains of Lieutenant Fred Brewer. Now, his mother never got, now she's been dead a long time, but she never got over the loss of her son because they never found him. Well, they're going to have a real burial, not too far from me. And they're going to have a color guard and the the remaining members of that family, they're going to come together and honor that serviceman, that young African-American pilot that gave his life so many years ago. And in his life, that's an example, that the end of a matter is better than the beginning. And then the Bible says it's the end of life as we know it. Jesus said, take heed, watch out. Beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist of the abundance of things that he possesses. In other words, you may lose everything in this life, but it's not about the things we possess. It's about the one who lives within us. If you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that's something you'll never lose. You'll carry that relationship on and on and on forever. 
the end of life as we know it. You can come to the end where you lose everything, but that doesn't mean the end of your life. And we're to be laying up treasures in heaven where the, you know, the, raw, the um, rust cannot destroy and the moth cannot get to. We may lose it all, but if you have Christ, you still have it all, all that really matters. And then there's the end of life, period. The Bible says in Hebrews, it is appointed man wants to die and then the judgment. You know, the pe- people today, and we're, we're all guilty. We live our lives as if we think that we're going to live forever. But the truth is we're not going to live forever. Life can be over in a heartbeat. Some of you, this may be your last opportunity to hear the gospel. Somehow, wherever you are, you're watching. And the Holy Spirit is dealing with your heart right now. And there's going to be for all of us. It is appointed man wants to die. And then the judgment. Uh, Life is like a vapor. It says over in the book of James, it appears for a little while. And then it vanishes away. And uh, I heard a story about another granddaughter of, of a grandfather. And anyway, she, she was going to go on an airplane trip to visit her grandfather uh, far away, a long journey. So she had to fly. It was her first flight, obviously. She was only five years old. And the mother, you know, was really a little bit fearful about putting her five-year-old daughter on a plane to fly to the grandfather. And, uh, but she had permission to get in and go to the plane, help her daughter get seated. And the grandfather on the other end had permission to meet the granddaughter as soon as she got off the plane. They worked out all those, those details. Well, before the plane took off, before the mother had to leave the daughter, she buckled, you know, the seatbelt, you know, <laughs> prayed over her daughter as all of us would, if you know the Lord. And, uh, she, a tear ran down the mother's face, she looked at her daughter and she said, I want you to know you have nothing to be afraid of. Everything's going to be okay. Well, the little girl said, mom, I know it's going to be okay because I know who I'm going to meet at the other end. And she was all excited to meet her grandfather and whatever holiday it was. What a wonderful opportunity. And one day, you know, we, that's going to be okay at the other end. If you're in Christ, you're going to see him face to face. He will be your reward, seeing Jesus as he is. If you don't know him, you can be sure that you will see him on the other end. And then the Bible says there's the end of all things. First Peter chapter 4, verse 7, and the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. If there's one thing we want to keep in these days, uh, we want to keep our love, our love for God, our love for one another. We want to keep that love on fire especially for God. We don't want to be among those, he said, that would be lukewarm at the end of time. And then there's the challenge to endure to the end. It says over in Matthew chapter 24, he that endures to the end shall be saved. I used to look at that scripture, and if you read the scriptures before, you see all the things that are going to happen in the last days. There's going to be a great you know, great persecution. There's going to be famine. There's going to be pestilence. As we spoke uh, of, the love of many will grow cold. There'll be lawlessness. There'll be wars and rumors of wars, Jesus said. But be not troubled. The end is not yet. There are many more things that are going to happen. There's going to be great deception on the earth. And it's going to be hard to know who's telling the truth because it seems like every, everything you're hearing is, a, is not the truth. Well, there is the truth, and that is when you hear the Word of God. Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. But I used to look at that Scripture and think, mercy, Jesus, with all the things going on in that chapter, will anyone endure to the end? And I felt like the Holy Spirit prompted me. That's why I wrote that Scripture in there. There's going to be many that will endure. They will have the grace of God. They'll have the love of God in them that will endure all the things that you're going to face at the end of the age. And he that endures to the end, you can be sure the promise will remain. He will be saved. And then there's the end from the beginning. 
and he knows thee. And the Bible says that, that Jesus is called the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He knows the beginning from the end. And uh, he knows how things are going to work out. And then there's also a couple more things, the end intended by the Lord. Now, over in the book of James, chapter 5, it speaks about the end and how we're to respond, how we're to live. It says, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits, the farmer plants the crops, and he waits for the harvest. And so you also be patient. Establish your heart. Make sure you're set, your heart is set upon him until the coming of the Lord. Then it says, do not grumble because the judge is standing at the door. So it's a good idea not to be complaining, grumbling at this season and time on the earth. Be looking, be thankful, be, be expectant. He's coming again. Then he said, my brethren, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. You count them blessed who endure. And he gives Job as an example. And Job is, it says, you've seen the perseverance, you've seen the suffering, but you've seen the end intended by the Lord. Then there's the end of the age, the end of the world. Going back to Matthew chapter 24, the question was, the disciples asked, what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus said, that's a good question. He said, number one, take heed that no one deceives you. There's going to be wars and rumors. There'll be all kinds of things that will happen on the earth. But if you know Christ, your end is not coming with the end of the age. For if you know him, you're, when you end, your life ends on this earth, really, it's just begun. The Bible says, Jesus said, you know, that you may die, but those who believe in him, they're going to live forever, forever and ever. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, they will not perish. They're not, their life on this earth will not end. They will live forever. They'll have eternal life. You know, from the beginning of time, men and women have sought out the, the fountain of youth. They've gone on great explorations to seek. How can you have a secret to live forever? There are people that, that want to know, how can you live forever? Well, they're never going to find that secret in our physical life. We're all going to die, but spiritually, you can live forever and ever. And the secret is in Jesus Christ. He shed his blood. He went to the cross. He died once and for all, that our sins could be forgiven and we could have the guarantee of eternal life. I believe, as I've been sharing from the Word of God, many have been, the Holy Spirit has been drawing many to, to give your life over to Jesus Christ. The Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. These are the days of the harvest. And the Holy Spirit is drawing many people right now to respond to the invitation to come to him, to yield, to surrender their lives to him. I want to lead you in a prayer and uh, make this your own prayer. But if you call on him, you will be saved. So just pray something like this. Say, dear God, I believe in you. I confess I'm a sinner. I've sinned. I ask you to forgive me. I choose to turn from sin. I turn my life over to you. I believe Jesus died. He rose from the dead. He lives forever, and he's coming again. And I thank you for the blood of Jesus that cleanses me. You know, the Bible says whoever calls on his name will be saved. But if you confess him with your mouth, if you believe in your heart that God has raised his son from the dead, you will be saved. If you prayed that prayer, contact us we, we want to know what he's done in your life. We want to know about your testimony. I pray right now God will touch many that are sick, many that are struggling with addictions or bondages or whatever it may be. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we break the power of that bondage. We break that sickness off of you in Jesus' name. And we speak life. We speak healing. We speak deliverance. Listen, God is a great God. Nothing is impossible with him. You place your trust in him. You extend your faith. You reach out your arms and say, Jesus, I need you. I need a miracle. 
and watch what God will do in your life because he's the one who is over all and he loves you. If you'd been the only one that had lived on the earth, Jesus Christ still would have died for you. That's why he came, that you would surrender to him, be saved, and live forever and ever and ever because God so loves the world. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. We're going to join you again. We'll be with you again next week. God bless you. See you again. Thank you for watching today's program. If you made a decision to trust in Jesus or God has touched your life, please email us at itrustjesus2023 at gmail.com. See you next week at the same time and same place. And may God richly bless you.